Assembled at their pre-race headquarters, a scenic Airbnb in Carlsbad, California, Team 288 consists of a collection of past team members, Ram veterans, and old friends. This group of individuals began to get to know each other as a crew, while over the next couple days, they assembled the equipment and the vehicles. As a crew and as individuals, they've come from around the country to support a man taking on a monumental task. I'm a bike shop owner. Um, I wanted to always own my own business and ended up finding something I'm super passionate about and, and in both cycling and skiing. Um, and uh, that led me to bike. And as I've been in that business, I've just gotten into it even more, right? The coolness of the bikes and the technology and, and the rides and different rides and seeing these races all over the country. Um, it really kind of gets me excited to think about all the different styles of riding, mountain biking, gravel racing, endurance long races, solo races, um, team races. So it's just that passion I think has grown over time from just being in the cycling industry. I've been cycling since I was, well, my whole life really cycling, but seriously cycling and racing since I was 25. So I'm going to say like 26 years of serious cycling. Um, and I've been doing some ultra cycling um, since really probably 2000. So that would make it about 19 years where I've gotten into doing some longer distance ultra cycling. Uh, you, you know, I started uh, riding my bike and doing longer distances. Really what motivated me is I was pretty good at it, I found out. As I did a few longer races, I had some success and I liked to do longer rides. So I would ride to a group ride and then ride home from a group ride, which would turn into a 150 mile ride. And it was like, man, I really like this. So I liked the fast part of the group ride going racing and that kind of stuff. But I also liked the long distance part where I could just settle in and and ride my bike. At 51 years old, this isn't Dave's first attempt at the Race Across America. Um, as, I, as I get ready to do this seventh race, um, the, the goal is to win the race. I think that's been my goal every race I've done from a, a DNF to a fourth and a third and a second place finish. It's always been to be here to win the race and, and that hasn't changed. I think we're trying to race for perfection, right? We've had issues in every race that have affected uh, the outcome of the race and we're trying to improve upon those um, even as I've gotten older. In an attempt to achieve that perfect race, the team is implementing a whole slew of technology to both monitor Dave's vitals and receive real-time information about the route. My devices help me during the race by one, uh, not wasting effort, right? I can see where I'm at and I can ride to a level uh, that is hard, but not too hard. Everyone on the crew is very aware of uh, the temperatures that we have and my power output that I have that we're seeing on the devices. And then using some uh, Connect IQ apps that have been developed, they can monitor way more stuff like my core temperature. And so I'm wearing a few other devices that connect up through Garmin Connect IQ. Prior to the race, Dave has been large and in charge, leading the crew as they prepare. But once the race starts, he'll turn over all decisions to them while he focuses on just riding. To make sure my crew knows so we don't waste a single moment of time out on the course, what they want. And, and I'll give them all of the direction in the world leading up to the race. I have a crew that is, some are experienced and some aren't at all but there's a lot of communication because everyone wants to do their best job. So there's a lot of questions I'm trying to explain to people. Or sometimes you have a crew that you say, I want this and I want this and this. But I want to do that all now because once the race starts, I go out of that mode. And it's please and thank you for the water you're handing me. I want, I would love this jersey on. And so I'm thankful and grateful that they're all along. And at that point, I don't want any control of the race, right? It's just ride my bike. And all of the decisions that are being made by my nurses, like Keelan and Nikki, who are my nurses to keep me healthy, 
I rely on them to make those decisions and I want them to make decisions based on where we're going to be on the course, um, making sure we get the right rest for the crew. I don't want to deal with any of that. I, I hop on the bike and, uh, and I pedal, right? And I pedal as fast as I can pedal at an effort that seems reasonable as I'm you know, looking at my, you know, my power and things. And I like to ride my bike. So literally, I don't have to worry about anything. It's not like I need to keep track of my hydration. My crew does that. So all I do is sit on my bike and go forward as fast as I can. And they pull up and hand me a water bottle when it's time as they're counting calories and keeping track of that. They're doing their job to navigate the course. They're making sure they get the sleep they need. So really all I have to literally do is pedal my bike. It happens to be about 3,100 miles. You know, it's nonstop pretty much. Um, I'm gonna get saddle sores. I'm gonna have pain. I'm gonna have all of these issues, but my crew is gonna help solve all of those. And it's a continuous effort by the crew to make sure I just ride my bike across the country. And so I, I like to keep it that simple. Racers and crew from around the world have assembled in Oceanside, California at the pier. This is the starting line for the 2019 Race Across America. Team 288 has staged in the pre-race crew parking area with the rest of the support vehicles. As Dave's starting time quickly approaches, he rides up to the pier along a line of crew vehicles waiting for their turn to begin the race. The racers depart in a staggered start. Each racer leaves one minute apart. In the last moments of calm, before he begins his 3,000 mile journey, Dave reflects on what helped bring him here today. Were those, were those special texts or are you just taking care of business at this point? No, those were, uh, yeah, special. So I got a, a friend who uh, is sponsored the time station, a young kid who turned out to be an amazing guy. And uh, he sponsored my time station. I was just letting him know I was ready to start. And then I had a friend uh, text me, his brother passed away way too soon and said he'd be along on my shoulder for the race. And I was just checking in with all the uh, special people that have been uh, in my life that aren't anymore who maybe have done this race or are a part of my life and it, uh, it became a pretty uh, special moment all of a sudden. So, you know, I got a, a few of them, you know, my friend Gerard, uh, I, I got my mother, of course, uh, I got uh, Dan Rupar, um, my, my uncle Keith just passed away. So there's a lot of people uh, that Scott uh, is definitely a Ram racer who went too soon. And so there's a lot of people like that that you think about when you're racing. And, it, uh, it just moved me that I'm lucky enough to be here racing and I know they're going to be out there uh, making sure I finish strong.